Yes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Abba Father. We glorify you. <laughs> we praise you. And we exalt you. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us together as one big family to learn the truth. So that the truth will set us free. Truly, Lord, you are speaking this word through Sister Pearl. And every year that is hearing and listening to this teaching, Lord, you have anointed us that we are able to open our hearts and listen to this teaching. Thank you, Lord, that our hearts are become fertile grounds, that we will receive the seed and it will bring forth a plentiful harvest. Lord, we thank you and we praise you that we will renew our minds to take this teaching and make corrections. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that the spirit of truth abides in us and teaches us all things. Thank you for opening our spiritual eyes and ears and making them sensitive to your word. We thank you for Sister Pearl, whom you have anointed to teach us today. Take complete control of her mind, her vocal cords. Let there be everything of you, nothing of her. Let you increase, Lord, and each one of us decrease. This prayer we make through the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Nati. Praise Amen. God. Praise God, Thank sister. You. Thank you, sister Nati. Yeah, praise God, sister. I'll start, sister? Yes, yes, Baba. Go ahead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I come before you just as I am. I know, Lord Jesus, that it is not me who will be speaking these words. Let every word I speak be for the glory of God. Nothing of me, but everything of you. Lord Jesus, as Mama Mary said yes, I said yes to Sister Maria to speak your word. Lord Jesus, help me, Lord Jesus, to make this teaching so simple and easy for everyone who would be present here and who would be listening to this on, the, on YouTube. Lord Jesus, let every word be, be put into practice for each and every one of us. Even me, Lord Jesus, help me to put into practice. Let it not be just my preaching, but let me also be a doer of the word of God that I will be proclaiming for the greater glory of God. Mama Mary, I ask you to intercede for me. All the saints of God, be with me, guide me, Holy Spirit, help me to speak your words. Nothing of me, but everything of you. Holy Spirit, Use my vocal cords to give you glory. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Mary, my mother, I ask you to intercede for me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And glory to you, Lord. Jesus, Good evening. thank you, Jesus. Good evening. Good evening, everybody, and welcome. To this session and thank you sister maria for giving me this opportunity to share god's word thank you jesus baba thank you jesus uh a reading from the book of john chapter 3 verse 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. 
This is the word of the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. God has loved us so dearly that he has given us his only begotten son. And it's so wonderful for us. We hear the scripture. There's a very famous Bible verse that perhaps everyone would have heard this and have a bet good, a good understanding. But perhaps today we need to renew our minds to go back to this famous verse. It is so important. It tells us about the unconditional love that God has for his creation. Here it teaches us about the sacrifice God made for us, even though we were sinners. It helps us to understand that the eternal implication of being a follower of Jesus Christ is very important. This verse is a promise and an affirmation of hope that we as Christians will have eternal life waiting for those who believe in Jesus. God therefore sent his beloved son as a perfect sacrifice for each one of us. It is through the death and resurrection of Jesus that we are saved, redeemed, and set free from sin and death. We are all promised eternal life. Jesus was sent to save the world. Jesus paid all our debts on the cross. Salvation was available to anyone who believed in Jesus. Today, as we, the Catholic Church, celebrate the feast of the exaltation of the cross, let us all adore the Christ. As we say, we adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by the Holy Cross, you have redeemed the world. The word of God clearly says, that Jesus humbled himself. He was obedient even up to the point of death. He was exalted and his name needs to be praised. We need, every knee needs to bow. Every knee needs to bend down and tell him that we are really sorry, Lord, for what we have caused you. But what we know, Lord Jesus, that when we confess this with our mouths, we believe that we will see the glory of God. Today, the cross is the greatest symbol of Christianity. It is a sign of suffering, a sign of human cruelty at its worst. The cross represents Christ's victory over death. The cross may seem to declare failure of Jesus, but in reality, it marks his victory. At, the, at Calvary, those who mocked him said, save yourself if you are the son of God. Come on down from the cross. As we read in the book of Matthew, chapter 27, verse 40. Matthew 27, 40, sister. Yes. You are going to tear down the temple and build it back up in, in three days. Save yourself if you are God's son. Come on down from the cross. They continued to mock him saying, he saved others, but he cannot save himself. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, how many times have we heard people telling us that we are Christians and we follow Jesus and you still go through pain and sufferings and trials and difficulties. They mock us, they ridicule us, but we just need to understand that they did the same thing to Jesus. Today, my dear brothers and sisters, let us take a closer look at the cross. I would like to go in depth to this cross. The cross is made of two pieces of wood. One is the vertical piece. 
and one is the horizontal piece. The vertical piece represents our relationship with God. With the way we talk to him, the way we have an intimate personal relationship, the way we seek him, the way we ask him for guidance. As scripture say in Mark 12, 30, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is that vertical relationship we are called to have. This commandment is the first commandment of in Matthew 12, 30. It says to love your God with all your heart. When we look at the horizontal piece, it represents an earthly relationship with one another. As scripture says in John 13, 34 to 35, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. But this, everyone, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Now we understand what the relationship of the horizontal piece is all about. Love for neighbor and love for others. That is the second commandment. Let us imagine a cross without a vertical piece. What would happen to the horizontal piece of this cross? You can unmute and answer one of you. What would happen if the, there was no horizontal piece? There was, if the cross was without a vertical piece, but had only a horizontal piece? Someone can answer me? It wouldn't be a cross. Anyone else? Any answers? The horizontal piece would just fall to the ground. Yes. Praise God. Yeah. Now let us imagine the cross without this horizontal part of the cross. What would happen? We don't have only, we only have left the vertical piece. And this yeah. vertical piece will be just aimed towards the sky. We mm. clearly understand that the cross needs both vertical Pieces. and horizontal. Because we need both to live the way God intended us to live. Vertically, we have a connection and a relationship with Jesus Christ, our maker, our creator, our God, from whom we gain our strength. So we just cannot only have a vertical relationship. We still need the horizontal relationship. We need, we need to have a relationship with our community, with others, and with our loved ones, with our neighbors. Without the relationship of both vertical and horizontal with God and with our earthly relationship, what, what happens? We fall down. We are missing out a huge part of our life if we don't intend to take both these dimensions very seriously. My dear friends, we all need to strive to have this vertical relationship and this horizontal relationship, which will help us to be at the center of the cross. When we are, when we have this vertical and horizontal relationship, we have a commitment for to love both, love God and love our neighbor, which will make us to be at the center of the cross. 
when we love vertically and horizontally we show christ's love to those around us we are all called to love jesus we are also called to be perfect as our heavenly father is perfect and we cannot be perfect by only loving god and not loving neighbor now let us remember that our relationship with god is affected if our relationship with people around us are affected if we are sad or we are upset with someone and we cannot show any love to them then our relationship with god is also disturbed and cannot yes. go on give me one cup and one spoon from the plastic spoon this today I would like to know what do we gain by looking at the cross what do we gain when we look at the cross of christ what do we see when we gain look at the cross what do we see anyone can answer me what do we see when we gaze towards the cross the wooden cross the pain and the suffering yeah pain and the suffering so we all go through pain suffering rejection but at the cross god is offering us his love amen let us look at 1 john 4 7 to 12 in our sv if you can sister yeah issues on nrs yeah, okay 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 someone wants to read someone wants to read 1 john 4 7 to 12 come on netty debra whoever okay i'll read yes, yes somebody read please okay beloved let us love one another because love is from god everyone who loves is born of god and knows god whoever does love does not know god for god is love god's love was revealed among us in this way god sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him in this is love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins beloved since god loved us so much we also ought to love one another no one has ever seen god if we love one another god lives in us and his love is perfected in us praise god if you read the verse 11 again sister please sure beloved since god loved us so much we also ought to love one another you clearly it says we ought to love one another so it's yeah. just having that vertical relationship with god we keep on saying all our prayers our novenas our declarations and loving him showing and not having love for one another is an incomplete love for god at the cross we experience god's unconditional love for us we sh- he shows us how much he loves us he has carved us in the palm of his hand in the book of jeremiah 31:3 says i have loved you with an everlasting love 313 what an awesome loving promise god gives us that he has loved us with an everlasting love someone can read that sister okay the lord appeared to him from far away i have loved you with an everlasting love therefore i have continued my faithfulness to you yes yeah god proves how much he loves us while we were still sinners in the book of romans 5:8 sister your god again proves his love for us 
someone can read sister yeah but god proves his love for us in that while we still were sinners christ died for us praise god thank you sister praise god now we've seen what it is to get to receive god's love at the foot of his cross next we will move to his mercy and grace what we receive from the cross the good thief on the cross trusted in jesus very late in his life he never had a chance to do any good or have anything to offer but in spite of all that let us see what jesus has to offer him what did jesus offer him forgiveness love more himself okay let us go to luke chapter 23 verse 4 43 2343 Luke 2343 Yeah He replied Truly I tell you today you will be with me in paradise What an awesome gift they get is offered paradise Today we can do everything under the sun but we will never receive paradise amen praise but this God. good thief he didn't offer anything he didn't do any good deeds but at the last moment late in life he realized god's mercy is so abundant that when he came to the cross he received god's mercy in hebrews 8:12 we see god's mercy for i will be merciful towards their iniquities and i will remember their sins no more this is exactly what god did to the good thief he didn't remember any of his offenses any of his things he was merciful to him we have such a merciful god who says in the beatitudes blessed are the merciful yeah they will receive mercy aren't we so blessed to receive this mercy we today can just come to the foot of the cross and ask for his mercy and grace we come to compassion compassion my dear brothers and sisters is just acknowledging the suffering of is just acknowledging the suffering of others it is when we take action to the help this person who is in pain or who needs help that we can express our concern our love our kindness to them that is what compassion is jesus was compassionate let us learn go to the book of ephesians 4:32 and hear his word and be kind to one another tender hearted forgiving one another as god in christ has forgiven you amen thank you sister so when we are compassionate we have to learn to be kind to one another we have to be tender hearted and be there like christ have forgiveness at the cross we can ask we can go to the cross and ask lord help us to have a compassionate heart help us to comfort those who need consolation and thank the lord for his compassion that is new to us every morning today we can go to him at the cross and ask him for forgiveness we can come to the cross and tell jesus that we are struggling in this area many of us today struggle in and we are not able to forgive those who have offended us let us ask jesus to teach us the way he wants us to forgive help us also to come and tell him today lord 
I've chosen to forgive all who have hurt me. It is very difficult sometimes for us to come to Jesus. But as we have become a new creation today, it must not be difficult for us. We, brothers and sisters, we have to ask the Lord to forgive our enemies for all they do to us. We will remove all the blocks in our life when we do this by asking them, asking the Lord to forgive the person. And when we forgive them, what we are doing exactly is just opening out that area where we start just getting God's blessings. They just blessings just start flowing into us. We don't need to chase after blessings. When we bear with one another, we have to forgive them. Even if the grievance is against us, such a bad grievance, we ask the Lord. The way I look at it is when I ask the Lord to forgive someone, even though sometimes we can't personally talk to them and ask them forgiveness, I say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I forgive this person. In the name of Jesus, I bless this person. In the name of Jesus, I love this person. Today, let us see what Jesus had to say when at the cross, when he was... Yeah, what did Jesus say at, on Luke 23, 34? It says, that's how Jesus forgave at the foot of the cross. Today, we also need to imitate Jesus. Luke Then Jesus 34. said, forgive, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. Today, that is what every time someone hurts you, Someone you cannot forgive. Just tell Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. What they're doing. Yeah. You just keep saying that you will learn how you will really forgive that person. In the book of Philippians 4, 31 to 32 says, Let us... Philip Sorry, not Philippines. I think I told Ephesians 4, 31 to 32, sister. Sorry. Ephesians 4, 31 31. to 32. Sorry, sister. That's okay. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Here again, we come to realization that God is forgiving us. And if we cannot forgive our brothers and sisters who are offending us, we cannot receive forgiveness. Let us come to the cross to receive healing. We come to the cross and ask the Lord Jesus to comfort all those who are sick. We ask him to wash them with, their, with his precious blood. And as we all know this famous scripture of 1 Peter 2.24, by the stripes and wounds, we are completely healed. In the book of Exodus 15.26, it says, I am the Lord, your healer. We don't need to worry about anything when we are sick, when we are in pain, when we are going through difficult sufferings. We just need to confess his word that he is the Lord who healeth. He is our divine physician. He is our divine healer. Let us all come to the cross and receive complete healing. Here I would like to give a small testimony about healing. In the year 2006, I went with my husband, my son, who must have been four, four years, five years old, and an older boy who was 19 years old. We went to India to see my mother and my mother-in-law who were not well. As I went, as we landed in Cochin, I kept my luggage in my mom's place and I went to my sister's house, which is next door, to have a meal. Coming back into the house, I thought I knew where the power switch was 
And without putting the entrance light, I went into the room and I didn't realize that all my luggage was there and I had a fall. Oh dear. But I fell over all the suitcases, but I didn't have any injury. Next day in the morning, I started having a terrible pain on my neck. It was a pain that kept on nagging, nagging, nagging. And I was one person and my sisters are people who always go in for homeo medication. So I told my sister, can you please get me some medication? So she got me some homeo medication, but it didn't do me any good. So I took some, I think it was paracetamol at that time, some painkillers. And I was pulling on for that day. My mother-in-law was at that time suffering from cancer. And she had an appointment the next day in Lakeshore Hospital, which is about maybe about 45, 50 kilometers away. So we, had, so she told me, since I'm going to the hospital, why and you're coming with me, why can't you also see the doctor there? So we decided, okay, I'll do that. So both of us, we take, we've gone on a taxi, left the house in the morning, went to the hospital, and uh, we took a chart for myself, seen the doctor, and he decided that I go and take uh, x-ray and then uh, also and do an MRI scan. So all that is being done, and we've been in the hospital the whole day and just cutting the story short. And at the end of the day, at about eight o'clock in the night, I was diagnosed with a problem with C6 and C7 wow. spine injury. And the only advice the doctor gave me was, uh, you can do surgery. Okay. And he said, in two days time, I can do the surgery. And I told him, I have to go back to Australia in a, in a week's time. He said, it's not a problem. We can still travel. Since my husband was not there, I didn't make any decision. I said, I will come back to you the next day. And I wasn't ready for taking any decision at the spur of the moment. Came back home. My family was all worried why we were in the hospital for nearly 12 hours. Came back. I called my husband. And I told him this is the problem. And I said, and I came home, my elder sister told me, we'll go and see another doctor who's a spine specialist. So we mix, fixed an appointment for the next day. In the meantime, we were having a fistula communion on that day, but still my, one of my sisters took me to the doctor, went and seen the spine specialist. We did not want to tell the spine specialist that we already went to another doctor because it wasn't going to look good. Hmm. So, but the spine specialist is such a professional with his job. He just touched my fingers. I said I was having pain here. Yeah? Just touched each finger of mine and he told me exactly what disc was damaged. So my eldest sister knew that she was a nurse. She realized that he's such a good doctor. So he said, I said, I'm come from Australia. And I said, yes, you can do it, but you can take one week's rest before you go back. In the meantime, the previous uh, doctors, they gave me a caller. So I was using that caller and I came back home. And I just, and my sister and myself, we were in the car and she said, yes, Pearl, it's better for you to do the surgery here. You'll have us, all of us here to support you, to look after you. If you go back there, you have nobody there. But we prayed. I said, both of us were in the car. We prayed. We said our memories. We prayed on the way. And we said, Lord, you have to show us a sign whether we need to do it or not. And I had to come back in a few days. So we went to the airline's office to find out whether we can get my ticket extended. And God showed us a way there that we were not getting a chance to extend the ticket. So I said to my sister, I decided not to have the surgery there. I'll come back to Melbourne and see what I can do. So I had a friend here who fixed an appointment with a GP who got us an appointment with the neuro, neuro, neurologist. And when I came, as soon as I came back to Melbourne, in two days' time, I went and seen the doctor. And he, the same doctor, saw all the results sorry before this back home in india i kept going to the holy we have a holy cross uh, chapel it is located in an area where the muslims live and went there and i cried out to the holy cross as well and asked for total and complete healing and i also used to put the oil that i picked up from there on my neck and all i did was went to a homeo doctor 
and I got medication from him. He took my whole uh, history of what I'm going through. And he told me before I leave, he'll give me some medication. I came back to Australia, seen the neurologist, and he also told me exactly the same thing. He said, if you don't do the surgery, what will happen is you, when you lift anything, you may just drop it. This will, will be the science that will happen. I said, I'm feeling much better now and I will see how I go. I said, okay. I, I, say, I, I said, I'm feeling much better. I said, if you are feeling better and if you continue with your medication, come back to me and tell me what medicine you took because I can treat, send my patients to this particular doctor. I mm -hmm. want to say praise and thank the Lord. My doctor was not only the homeo doctor, but it was my Jesus. Amen. Healed me today. It is now, I think, 15 years. 15 years? Yeah. About 15 years, 14 years. I have not had a single problem with my spine. Oh. Praise God. Praise I did not God. do any surgery. So when we oh. trust in God and when we go to the foot of that cross, we will receive healing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We can go to the cross with our brokenness, with our pains and our sufferings. And at the cross, we can bring all these pains, all the difficulties we have, because God is our mighty healer. He says, I will heal the brokenhearted and I will bandage up their wounds. At the cross, Jesus was very concerned for the one he loved, especially his mother. He was broken to leave her alone at the moment. At that moment, he provided her with a son, Apostle John. Let us read from the book of John, chapter 19, verse 26 to 27, sister. John 19, 26 to 27. Someone reading, sister? Yeah. yeah. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. Here we can see how John received the mother with great honor. There are many times in our lives when we lack love from our father, our mother, our brothers, our sisters who walk away from us. Let us come to the cross of Jesus and ask him to be our mother, our father, and he will embrace us into his royal family. Let us remember we become part of the family of Jesus. As we belong to his family, we are the daughters and the sons of the most high God. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. At the cross, we can ask for freedom. We come to the cross and ask the Lord to set us free from all the evil, the sin and darkness. As we all know the scripture, Luke 4, 18, the spirit of the Lord is upon us. My God himself has anointed us and he has filled us with his love and set us free. We receive so much freedom at the foot of the cross. In John 8, 36, it says, if the son of God sets me free, I am free indeed. Here at his cross, we are renewed in our spirit. We are strengthened in a place where we are assured that Jesus has paid the price 
for each one of us. And at the cross, we receive salvation. All things are made new at the foot of the cross. Let us come and receive his favor. Praise God. When we come to the cross, one thing that I always remember is in every situation, we need to cast all our cares on him because he cares for us. I would like to share something about a young sister who wanted to go to heaven. She asked Saint Bernadette without hesitation replied to her, make the sign of the cross well. She wants us to make it a point to pray it with our mind, with our heart, with our soul and strength. Because when we do, we are entering the heart of our Christian life. This Amen. is one of the powerful prayers we as Catholics make. Let us remember this. The simplest way we can be a witness. Let us claim protection, dedication, and surrender ourselves to be this witness. The sign of the cross is the powerful prayer which has power every time we make it. As we sign ourselves with the sign of the cross, what we are doing to ourselves is God blessing are over us. We are claiming the protection of Jesus Christ. We are consciously or subconsciously making the cross and it protects you from all evil. The sign of the cross is a powerful prayer for deliverance. As we sign ourselves, we are surrendering our minds, our thoughts, our intellects, our hearts, and our bodies, and our soul to him. When we sign ourselves with the cross, we are also witnessing to the public, especially when we are at a restaurant, before we have our food, before we travel, as we enter a holy place of worship, when we do this outward, outside, we are surrounding our people and helping them to realize that we are protecting ourselves with the Holy Cross, which we are witnessing as well to the public. If we read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. We read chapter 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us realize how powerful this signing of the cross is. Today, every time we wake up, we make the sign of the cross. When we go to sleep, and before sleep, we make the sign of the cross. As we leave our home, we make the sign of the cross. As we have our meals, we make the sign of the cross. As we enter the car, let us make the sign of the cross. As we enter our workplace, let us sign ourselves with the cross. As a conclusion, I would like to say, we all need our daily embrace of the cross. Let us reflect in our life all the sins that we commit which separate us from God. But we need to realize that we have a merciful loving, compassionate, forgiving God. Let us say yes to him. Let us say sorry to him. Let us ask for his compassion on us. Let us commit ourselves 
to follow the path of self-sacrifice love for Jesus. My dear brothers and sisters, we all will have hardships. We all will go through difficulties. There will not be a single day without pain and suffering. But all we need to know is that we love Christ and we love, G love our neighbors and we can imitate Christ. Let us daily pick up our crosses and follow Jesus and we will see the glory of God in everything that we do. Amen. 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 Beautiful, Pearl. Very nice. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that uh, testimony of yours. Yes, right? Sister. Even yes. though you went there and it is related to spine, the pain would have been excruciating. excruciating. Yes, of course. But you chose to be in faith. Yes, you yes. had a choice. Yes, either yes. to worry about what the doctors told you about the surgery that they have they are planning their report yes. says yes or you stick to the faith, faith and yes. to the cross yes and that's you did exactly yes what that's what exactly i did and the few days that i was there sister it yes. was going going to attend prayer meetings praise god yes going to going to the cross that is holy cross Yes. And not only that, you didn't stay there when by going to the prayer meetings, you heard, you listened yes. to the word Listen of God. Listen to God's word, yeah. Listen yes. to the word rather than the words and of the doctors. Yes. You did not leave your emotions to dictate to you. Definitely not. Because yes. emotions and thoughts can just be nagging. Yes. yes you know, yes. they can dictate, take over your mind and just dictate to you what to do and what you don't want to do. Correct. You know? And yes. that, that was your labor and your hard work yes, of no, all, not also, giving up. God, yeah, also, I, I was at rest. Yes. And not, not in confusion, not worried, not anxious. Yeah. and That I is think, what we all need to do when, yeah. when we have sickness, when we have trials, when we have difficulties. Is, this is only one part. Of a testimony, there are so many things my God has done for I me. I can imagine. I yes, need, I will share every time I get a chance. Yes, amazing, amazing things. One thing I ask each one of you who's present listening to this: let us not take our eyes off Jesus, focus yes. on Him, and be that strong rock. Because when we are in trials, when we are in tribulations. We have only one person to hold on to. And if we hold on to that person, we don't need to worry. We don't need to worry. Things can come, things can go. Nothing yes. will shake you. I ask each one of you today to have that strong faith in our God. At that time, my dear brothers and sisters, I may not have known any much scripture. I wouldn't be confessing scriptures, but I had that trust and faith in my God, who will never leave me, never abandon me. Praise God. Yes, and, and like you say, when we are in the word, when we focus on God, the trials and the battles just double up. Sure. They, they're just endless. They don't yes. end. Never. <laughs> they, yes, they, are, but, they, they come every day, yes. knocking at your door. Yes, exactly. <laughs> You know, because uh, because that's the commitment. That's the choice we make. Yes, we have to and, make the right choice. Yes, and uh, you know, and that only takes us to another level. We Praise learn God. to fight. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else has anything? Anyone to say? anything to ask? Yeah. Beautiful pearl. That was nice. Very practical and simple and easy to understand. The teaching. Thank you, sister. Teaching was awesome. My Praise husband well said, "Sister Pearl, thank, thank you, God. sister Lovey." Yes. Thank you. My, sis, my husband asked me whether I'm studying for PhD. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You were what you, you, are, you are. No, no, no. He, he, I, you said if you had to study like this when you were in school, it would have been somebody. <laughs> <laughs> well, you but know you what? Somebody yes. for Christ. You are a warrior for Christ, sister. Yes, yes. He, he, talk, he, talk you know. More than the PhD. <laughs> well, like God it. never calls the qualified. He qualifies the call. Exactly. Correct. Praise <laughs> God. <laughs> Praise God. Awesome. Praise God. Anyone has anything to say, my dear sisters? All everyone so quiet. 
On that least, you... thank, thank you, sister, who, who was the one who read all the scriptures for me. Deborah, 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 Deborah. Deborah, Deborah. Thank you, Deborah. And Most Deborah, welcome. Once again, once again, beautiful testimony. Yes. Awesome <laughs> teaching. She's, she's coming soon, Pearl. Yes, yes. <laughs> Anyone else has anything to say or anything to share? Anyone wants to ask any questions? Yes. Um, Maria, I have a small testimony. Please go ahead, Moira. Nice to hear you. Come on. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it's small, but it's uh, mighty and Amen. glory to Jesus. Thank all you. glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Um, I was just, I was going shopping today. And I just as I got out of my car, I said, Jesus, show me one person that I can speak your word to. Wow. to and uh, as I got off, the car unlocked it and I could hear this child screaming in, and his mom was carrying him and uh, taking him to the car. He had a little cut. His, he walked barefoot and he got a glass piece in his foot. And so he was screaming and crying and I had some antibacterial wipes and I could see a little bit of blood coming out. So I took it and rushed up to his mom and said, would you like a wipe? And then she said, oh, he's got a small piece. And she was frantically trying to pull it out, but she couldn't. So I said, do you want me to have a go? Uh, I'll try, I said. She said, yeah, why not? So she let me have the tweezers and I was trying, but the child was screaming so much and he was like really getting so anxious. But I tried and I was praying as I was trying. I said, Jesus, let this come out quickly so this child can be at peace. And um, so he, he was getting very anxious and mom was getting anxious as well. So the, the doctor's clinic was just opposite. So I said, look, he's, he's really getting um, you know, upset. So why don't you just take him across? They might have a better way of taking it out. Um, and as I, she said, oh, thank you so much for your help and your time. And I walked away and I said, Jesus, let that child not suffer. Let it come out quickly. And so I, I handed back the wipes to her and I, and I walked away and I was praying as I walked to the shops. And two, maybe a minute or two minutes later, I saw the lady with the child in the shop and he was perfectly fine. So I turned around and I walked up to her and I said, is that okay? Is this, is this foot okay? And she said, yeah, he, you know what? It's just as you turned, he pulled it out himself and it was fine. <laughs> wow. So I didn't need to take oh. it. Take it. And That's so nice. then she said, you know, he, he was just, he's, he has autism. And so I said, oh, God bless him. I said, I'm, I'm so happy that it came. And I said, what a brave boy you were. I said, you took it out yourself. You're so clever. And I said, God bless you. And I walked away. And then it struck me that uh, she said he has autism. So coming down the next aisle, she was facing me and we, met again and I said um can I chat with you for a minute I said I wow. said you mentioned that he had autism so I said um I listened to this um um you know this uh, teaching it's called nothing is impossible with Jesus and uh the, it is uh you know brother Amal teaches about how autistic children autism, are getting yeah. healed and getting better. And what the doctor said was impossible, but with God, everything is possible. Yes. So I said, would you like to listen to that? And I said, and I gave her Isaiah 50 verse four and five. Um, and I told her, uh, she said, I wanted her to exchange numbers, but she said, I'll take that and I'll look it up for myself. She said, so I said, okay, fine. So I, she, she took it down on a phone. And uh, so I said, she said, yes, I, uh, we are Catholic and we believe, oh. I believe strongly in Jesus. And I said, I noticed this child's uniform. It's the same church that I go to. I said, so uh, I, I'm so happy that, you know, God connected me with you. I said, please listen to this. And then she says, you know what? I work with autistic children. I work with disabled children too. So I said, praise God. I said, God connected me to wow. you because through you he's going to make so many more children yes, better yes and healed by the blood of jesus the word of god and so i was yes. so happy and so overjoyed like you know i just said that one minute and the next minute god showed me praise, so, god. praise so the lord happy. you know when you, you get so her joyful. number moira you can yes. even connect to suzanne you know from the group yes Yes, but she was reluctant because it was the first time we met. Yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. No, when you meet her next time, feel free yes. to connect to Suzanne or Mary. Sure, sure. Yes, yes. I did an... tell her there was this, the, the Irish lady, Mary O'Connor, and I said that, you know, she has a child who has autism as well. And, you know, how the doctor said things were not possible, but 
she kept confessing and believing and she, she said yes I do believe everything is possible with God she said so nice. I was really overjoyed and God yes. is so true, wow. true to so, his word He's so faithful yes. so let us all agree that all the blockages mm -hmm. are gone and she is coming to know and listen to the word of God and yes. understand and, yes. and that boy yes. is completely going to be free from autism yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank God. God. Thank completely God. free, sister. Yes. yes. Completely He's already completely name. free. Already, yes. Amen. 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 Thank God. Do you Thank follow you. up, Moira? Yes. She must be coming sister. to your same church, Baba. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've never seen her before, and she's probably never seen me too. But yes. Yes. That's was, because uh, God divine put connection. That person. Yeah, yes, it's a yes, divine yes, connection. Yeah, it and is. It, yeah, been, and it yeah, doesn't been, happen. Wow, that was amazing. Yes. Yes. God knows the desires of our heart. Praise God, yes. Yes, Praise like God. throughout today, I was confessing, Jesus, you are with me, you are in me, and you're working through me. Oh, so I kept saying that. Yes, yeah. so beautiful. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Moira. Thank you, Jesus. Awesome. Thank you, Marie. Beautiful. Anyone else? Come on, see, this is so beautiful and so practical sharing as well. Anyone wants to say anything that happened to you today? Half, half, middle of the day for you guys, end of the day for us. <laughs> um, I would, I would want to share something. Okay, is, go um, ahead, Lavi. Uh, my my friend who's she's going for a surgery, uh, for a hip surgery, and uh, she had gone for the before the surgery. Um, surgery is on Thursday. Um, she went last week, last week or last before week, she went to the doctor, uh, to the surgeon and the surgeon had given her everything was negative. Right. So, um, right. so everything was negative and he was only speaking about how you can die soon. How you can? How you will die soon. Oh, die soon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so my friend called and told me, uh, Lavi, I want to speak to you, but I can't speak now. Uh, I'm going outside because I'm going for a walk and I, because I don't want to say it in front of my family. So she called and told me, um, if anybody wants to die soon, he'll have to go to this doctor because wow. he'll give you quickly, he'll give you that shock. <laughs> so I said, what happened? <laughs> I said, what happened? I told them, um, so I'm going for my uh, hip surgery. And um, so he said, once you do the hip surgery, yeah, you're, you're, you're sh short and, uh, you know, you're so much overweight. And uh, if I'm going to, when I'm going to do the surgery, you may get a clot in your brain and you can die on the oh table. Um, if not, you can be paralyzed and then that's all your life is. Or if not, uh, you may get a heart attack and you can die. So she, she was like, sitting there and looking at the doctor and uh, she didn't have anything to say so after all these talk he asked do you have anything to ask he, she, she said uh, I don't have anything to ask because I'm on a stroke yes. she said yes. because yes. of the things what you have said to me mm. so then she called me and she told me like this I told uh, Baba uh, what do we learn you know what does God speaking to us you know um, he speaks to us when people speak to us in this kind of way what do you respond to you know you bless them. you bless the doctor you bless his family you bless his cleaning you bless his uh, finance everything you bless okay and you be free now do you want to take this and walk around that's going to be heavy for you do you want that heaviness or do you want to have peace or you want to be um pieces you know? so i spoke to her and um, gave her strength through the word of god and she's always you know she always even come for our meeting and very 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 good friend of mine and um, i started giving her scriptures and i prayed with her as well and she felt really in peace and she went home and uh, and i'm telling lord there is something that i want to say to uh, uh, my friend um, can you let me know you know I am not able to get it but I don't want to use my intellectual way but you tell me you know what to speak so I was asking the Holy Spirit and today 
I was um, talking to her husband and giving him strength through the word of God. Suddenly, it just clicked. Suddenly, it just like, oh, you need to speak to this to Digna. I said, oh my goodness me, I need to. What was it? Because um, the example what I was going to give her was, I had my thyroid um, surgery and. Um, when I was going for my thyroid surgery, this doctor looked at me and said, well, we have to tell you things because uh, this is what is going to happen if you do your surgery. You know, uh, a nerve on your neck, there's a nerve which connects you to your speech, your tongue. So if that nerve gets touched, you can lose your speech. Now... That's, that's exactly the negative way. Now, should I do the surgery or no? I said, Lord, you are there. You are doing the surgery. I'm not going to worry about it. But without even, like I did the surgery, next, the next day itself, I was out of the hospital. And till today, I have no issues, praise God. And exact same way I told Digna, Digna, I want to tell you something, Digna. This is the way the doctor is here. Because they have to speak the fact, you know, yes, what is yes. going to happen. Yes. Okay. So they are being covered because they have already informed you. It is not that this is going to happen to you. They have to say these are the things. Then she looked at me and said, really? Yes, Rita. So you can be confident, not in his words, in God's words, that he is taking care of you. He is the healer. And yes. medications and doctors are given by our God. So you bless his hands. And it's not him who's going to do the surgery. It's God himself is coming and doing the surgery for you. And you will walk out of that hospital laughing. Believe. Believe in him. And she was so much in peace and gave her a big hug. We had a lot of... Um, we, 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 I worked with her. And uh, I bought a big bouquet of flowers and one of another friend also bought. And we, we didn't even speak that we are going to buy. We bought almost the same color flower, which is yellow. Praise God. And she was so happy. She was so much in peace. And um, yes, and uh, we really uh, we agreed in Jesus' name that uh, she's completely set free. And uh, there is no side effects, nothing. And she's walking back normally. Praise God. The school. Yes, we agreed. Yes. So um, it's it's really sometimes when you receive these negative things, you can get yes. destroyed. Yeah. I, no. Yeah, but they are doing their job anyway. You know, as yes. you are talking, Lavi, the Holy Spirit directed me to Sirach 38. Can you put um, Baba Fatima? You know, when we say we don't want to go to the doctors, but this, this, when I read this for my mom, it really touched me, you know. And now mm -hmm. I say, okay, have you been to the doctor? This is the first thing I ask. Right? Sirak, chap full chapter you put. So you all can read this later, but just see how mm -hmm. it starts. Okay, put one to ten or something. We won't read the whole thing. Which chapter, sister? Sirach. Sirach chapter 38. 38. Yeah, that will do. Sirach doesn't come on there. Oh, okay. So what is yeah. that other name, I wonder? No, you don't just go to Google and type Google it and it. you should be able to. You should get it in one of the things. Yeah. Oh. Give it what is it, sister? Sirach? Sirach. Uh, chapter chapter 38, 38. Uh, verse verse 1 onwards okay I've got it here on the thing let God, me just read I, it I got good news you got it on it I got good news yeah God sorry give doctors the honor they deserve for the Lord gave them their work to do their skill came from the most high and king reward them for it. Their knowledge gives them a position of importance and powerful people 
hold them in high regard. The Lord created medicines from the earth and the sensible person will not hesitate to use them. Didn't a tree once make bitter water fit to drink so that the Lord's power might be known? Yeah, so you can read this later. But you know, it. this is where we say, okay, we, do, we don't want to go to the doctor. But actually we have to because yeah. God has created them and they are serviceable. Yeah. But one no. thing also, sister, when whoever's frightened to take medication, all we do is we say, we, Jesus, we eat your body, we drink your blood, yes. you live in us, we live yes. in you. you. We have eternal life. Bless the medication you're taking and nothing yes. can calm you. Yes, praise God. praise God. You know, and it's all about God in the end. God is always mm. the starter and the finisher. Yes. You know, in between is all his creation. So, praise God. Yes, so beautiful. Thank you, Lavi. Thank you, okay. Pearl. Thank you, sisters, for sharing. And thank you, thank Moira. You, Moira for Ma uh, Merlin, you're saying the Baba Merlin closing prayer? Hi, yes, Maria. I'm, I, I'm saying the closing prayer. Yeah. Hmm. I'll say? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Father, we thank you for everything. Lord, we thank you for this teaching, Father. Father, each and every word, what is spoken here at this class, you have heard it all, Father God. We thank you, Father. We know, Lord, that nothing is impossible with you, Jesus. All things are possible. Father, as we all gather here to worship you, to honor you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for leading us, guiding us, guarding us, and protecting us in all our ways. All glory and honor we give to you, O Lord, for you are our God, and there is none but you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as uh, uh, all the sisters have spoken, and the word that we heard, Father, we put it in our hearts. It's stored in our hearts, Father. And Father, Though that word, Father, is going to manifest and the fruits are going to be manifested, Father God, through our lives. Our lives are going to say it all, Father. We thank you, we praise you, we give you honor. Father, this time as we give it in your hands, the further time also we give in your hands, Father. Our lives are yours, Father. We thank you, we praise you, we give you glory. All glory to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank Amen. You. So, Thank so you. I just want to